We must risk delight. We must have the stubbornness to accept our gladness in the ruthless furnace of this world. Jack Gilbert Welcome to the Dreaming Girl podcast. Here we talk about spirituality, self-development and how to live our best, most authentic lives. I'm Holly, thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoy this episode. I am so freaking excited for this week's episode and topic. It's all about creativity and creative living and how we can live more creative, authentic, truthful lives, which I really do think is so connected to expression of self and our purpose here on earth. Last year I read an amazing book which has since made most of my favourite books list. It's Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert and it really touched me in a way because I would consider myself to be a creative person. I love to write, I love to podcast, I love to blog and I really started just to show you how to start living creatively without fear from a place of courage. Not being afraid to speak out, to live our authentic truth, to be courageous and creative, follow our curiosity. So today that's what I want to talk about. I think we've all inherited this idea that if we're not good at art or drawing or painting or crafts then we're just not creative and we sort of give up on it and if we can't paint, if we can't paint a pretty picture um, then we're just not creative people. To be honest, I think this idea is complete BS. I think we're all creative, we all have something within us that is yearning to be expressed and to be, is this, this is an art metaphor, but you know, painted onto our canvas of our life. <laughs> that was cheating. But it's, we have something that lights us up and wants to be made manifest. Creativity means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. I think we all have creativity within us and it comes in the form of our passions, of what we love to do, of what we could get lost in if we had the opportunity to, or the resources to do it for our whole lives, what we, what we would do. I think creativity is an expression of self and of following our curiosity for life and for what is hidden within us. In, in Big Magic, Elizabeth Gilbert asked the questions which she thinks and I think sum up creative living. And that is, do you have the courage to bring forth the treasures that are hidden within you? We all have something within us that we love to do that makes us feel alive and that is our creativeness. It could be knitting, it could be chess, it could be public speaking, it could be practicing law, it could be gardening, it could be mowing the grass, it could be cooking, it could be baking, it could be, yes, crafts and writing and painting and embroidering. For me, it's blogging and podcasting and writing. That's how I express my creativity, but there's so many different outlets for it that I don't even think we realise are our creative pursuits. Creativity doesn't have to be limited to the classroom, to an art class. I think the way that we live our lives can be creative, but we, we've been taught and we think that we're not creative if we're not good at these things. At the classics of painting and art, your creativity can be whatever lights you up, whatever just makes you feel so good and inspired and you'll know the feeling, you do know the feeling whenever you're doing something that you absolutely love, even if it's just reading a book, taking a bath, baking, you feel lit up inside, you feel like you're truly living, you don't feel stagnant or deadened and I feel like when we don't, when we push our creativity to the wayside because we think we can't make a career out of it or we can't make money doing it, that we really lose something of ourselves and of our passion and of our soul and of our love of life. Creativity really is living our truth. Recently I really started to consciously include more of these creative outlets in my life to make time for them and for me it it wasn't an option not to anymore. For so long I had put off starting the blog, writing a book, starting this podcast, recording this episode, <laughs> but after I read Big Magic and I recently reread it um, just last month, 
it made me realize even if I can't make a career of doing it, even if there's no money to be made in it, I still have to do it because I'm not me when I'm not. You know, I'm writing um, fantasy novels that, you know, I haven't really shared with anyone. Um, I'm actually starting to share them on Wattpad, so I'll leave the link below, but I had to write them because they were they were what I constantly thought about, all I wanted to do, and by thinking that I couldn't get them published or I couldn't make money off of them, it sucked out that life from me, it made me feel listless and aimless, and when I finally started to really put my all into writing and making time for them every single day, that's when I started to feel alive again. That's when I was getting into flow every day. Even doing this now, I this is an expression of creativity and I love to do it. I feel so lighthearted and alive. <laughs> so I've put together an informal list of things you can do to start living more creatively. Tip number one I've already kind of talked about and alluded to, but it's to follow what lights you up. Follow what makes you feel alive, what you love to do, and keep doing it no matter what. Like I said, it you feel like you can't get some if you feel like you can't get somewhere with it, if you feel like you can't monetize it, if you feel like people will judge you for having this cre creative outlet, this hobby on the side, then don't tell anyone about it. Just do it for you. Do it because you need to. Do it because your soul needs a way of expressing itself. You need a way of expressing yourself and your curiosity needs a way of expressing yourself. And who knows, you know, if Picasso, if Van Gogh, if Tesla, if Elon Musk, if they hadn't followed their curiosity, they wouldn't have created everything that they did and they might have not been famous in their lifetimes for some of them but they still gave the world something else imagine if they had kept it within themselves the world would be less off because of it the world would be a little poorer because of it and when you don't purposefully create time for create time and space to follow your passions and to make them habits and hobbies you're a little poorer for it your soul is poorer for it Pewter, not pewter. <laughs> Tip number two is kind of just in the same vein is what to consciously make time for it. And if you can, do it every single day. Even if it means waking up an hour earlier, going to bed an hour later, putting your phone on do not disturb for an hour, putting a sign on the door that says come back later, I'm creating. Make time for it. And if you don't, you you make time for working out, you make time for cooking, you make time for eating, you make time for showering. This is an essential part of your soul care, of your self care, of what makes you you. Really make it a part of your routine, make it non-negotiable. Even if you don't really feel like doing it, you wouldn't put off a shower or sleeping forever just because you don't feel like doing it. Make it a part an integral part of your day even if you just even if you don't have time for a day i know everyone has busy lives so they have children or they have work if you make time every week for it even an hour or two every week is better than nothing it's better than what you were doing before consciously make time for your creativity for your passion to follow your curiosity my next tip or piece of advice is if you're sitting there and you're not sure of what lights you up. If you haven't really found that thing yet, don't don't um, lose heart. Everyone has that thing. It is so innate, innate in us. Even if you can't, if you don't know what it is right now, set about trying to find it. Go to new classes. Watch YouTube videos on stuff that you're curious about. That's part of the thing. Is follow your curiosity. Try new hobbies. Rediscover old hobbies. What did you love to do as a kid? What did you love to do? As a teenager, what did you love to do at college, university that you gave up? Maybe it was playing golf, playing tennis, hiking. And if you can't remember, ask your friends and family. <laughs> ask your mum, what did I last love to do? Think about the last time you truly felt lit up by life. You truly felt creative. You truly felt magic. What were you doing? Because I really think creativity is our magic, which I'll get to later on. My next kind of tip 
it's not even like really a tip, it's just <laughs> something I forgot to include at the start that I just fall off now so I'm adding it, is the way that we live can be cr creative, can be an expression. We, we all live unique lives, we all live differently and that is an, an expression of our creativity, the way we choose to spend our days, our nights, our evenings, our weekends. That is an expression of our curiosity of who we are. It is our way of living that no one else can live. We all, we are all different from everyone else. We all live differently from everyone else. And even just acknowledging that, that yes, that is a form of creativity. It can It changes your mindset to a more creative mindset so more ideas can flow in. Next tip is to be open to ideas, open to whatever avenue creativity comes into your life learning something new every day, every week, every month, every year. You know, I really do think when we're in that mindset of learning something new, that we're constantly in expansion, we're constantly in growth, and that's really what creativity makes us feel like. When you're doing something that you love, you do kind of feel like your heart expanding and glowing and growing. So learn something new all the time, some ideas. So be every day learn a new fact, or if you're learning a language, new vocabulary. Every week, learn a new way of doing something, a new recipe. Every month, you could learn a new skill. I know Skillshare has lots of stuff I love to go on. You could learn more languages. You could learn a new exercise. Every year, you could learn a new life skill, like first aid, or driving, or aerial silks, or helicopter. <laughs> helicopter piloting. Is that the word? Yeah, I think so. No, it's not. But <laughs> the point is when you're constantly open and learning new things, you have more, you're kind of sending out those signals that you're open. You are ready for anything to come in that will make something that you can follow, curiosity that you can latch on to and follow and see where it takes you. I've lost count of what number we're on but my next tip is to change your routine or do something that you always do but do it differently. We spend so much of our lives living on autopilot. We drive to work, we walk to work, we do the dishes but our minds are really somewhere else. We're just going through the motions but by switching up our routine it wakes us up to that moment. It makes us, it wakes us up to maybe we cook a new recipe <laughs> or instead of Instead of buying, this is one that I'm going to do, instead of buying curry sauce from a jar, make it ourselves with the spices and all that. Maybe we take a new way to work, or we cycle to work. We, instead of scrolling on our phones on the commute, we bring a book, we bring a, an audiobook or a podcast. Whatever it means to you to do something differently, to do a regular thing differently, try it out and it'll open you up to like I said, when we learn something new, it, it's, it opens you up to new ways of being, you know, new ideas. And when you're open to new ideas, they do come flying in. They do come looking, they do come searching. And if I may get a little esoteric for a moment. In Big Magic, she talks about the, the idea of ideas being conscious, of being, of being, of thought forms being alive things, the ideas are out there swirling around the quantum realm and all they want is to be made manifest and they latch on to whoever they believe will have the best shot or is their best chance of being made manifest. So if you do have an idea for a book, if you do have an idea for a product, if you have an idea for a recipe, go at it. That idea has come to you because they, it thinks that you are its best chance at physicality. And if you don't believe in all the esoteric stuff, you don't have to. But if you do, if you're open to it, there's a little tidbit for you. Along the same lines of my previous tip is to go somewhere new. Even if it's just to a new coffee shop. You know, when you go somewhere new, you don't, you never know who you'll meet or how you'll be inspired by your surroundings. Or maybe you'll see, you go for a walk a different way, you'll see a beautiful sunset and you'll suddenly be overcome with the urge to paint it. Recently I decided to go to a creative writing class 
and it's on a Tuesday night and I really like it but the way that I walk there is past my old um, first year accommodation at university and even though it's even though it's not somewhere new for me I've walked there so many times before um, in first year I hadn't been in a few years and I'm a much different person my mindset and the way I see the world is a lot different now than it was before so it really did kind of feel like somewhere new when I walked past it and I had this idea for a short story of my very experience of walking past something familiar and all the emotions that come with that, all the nostalgia, all of the you know, looking back and the reflection that comes with that. It also it's, it's a short writing short story writing class that I'm taking so it really was kind of serendipitous that I was walking to a short story writing class and I have to write a short story about just about every week. So I was somewhere with there, I got this idea, it's all right, it all works in sync. That just me that finds that cool, I don't know. But <laughs> my next one is from it's from a course I'm doing actually in abundance. And it's to have an ideas book. And I'm looking at my book right now as I as I um, record this and I realise I haven't actually done this in about a week. So maybe I'm a bit of a hypocrite, but I do find it really useful. Let's actually get this book and see what um I wrote. Basically an idea book is an idea journal is every morning maybe when you're drinking your coffee or your tea is to sit down and write 10 new ideas that just randomly pop into your head. They don't have to be good. They really don't have to make any sense at all. I have written here cat psychiatrists and I don't think it meant psychiatrist for cats. I think it meant picture this a cat with like a monocle and a pen and a notebook sitting on one of those big armchairs and you're lying on like those she lounges or whatever they're called in the doctor's office and this in the therapy <laughs> and the cat is your therapist. See that's that is silly but it's an idea and after that I actually had a nice idea, actually quite a good idea. And again this is what I spoke about earlier of opening yourself up to new ideas, opening yourself up to receive. And you know what, it does work because even though a lot of these are really stupid, some of them, I might just do it one day. In fact, I think I might do a lot of them one day. And my final tip is all about curiosity. I talked about curiosity earlier, that creativity is really an expression of that. And one of my favourite books in the whole world is called You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. And there's a whole chapter where the best thing she said that the best thing she ever did was make her motto I just want to see what I can get away with. This really puts a more light tone on our lives when we just make our motto I just want to see what I can get away with. We're not as scared that we might fail or make a mistake or that people will laugh at us. We're just doing it for us. We're doing it because we want to because it sounds interesting and and yes, we do spend so much time not doing stuff and not following our passions because we are afraid of what other people will think. And, I, and you just have to work through that on your own and I think I am going to make another episode specifically on dealing with that kind of fear. But when you get through it and on the other side is just creation and what lights you up and new hobbies and new opportunities and it's just light. So in the same vein as Jen Sincero, ask yourself or say to yourself, I just want to see if I can write a book. I just want to see if I can climb a mountain. I just want to see if I can have a successful law practice. I just want to see if I can embroider a beautiful flower <laughs> onto a pillow. I just want to see if I can follow a Bob Ross tutorial. I just want to see if I can paint something unique or draw something different. I just want to see what I can get away with. This is your life. You can live it and express it in any way you want and I hope that you do. Well that's it for me in this week's episode. I am getting, I, f I think I'm getting better at these. I mean, this is only episode 5 and I definitely feel like I'm getting more comfortable talking about all the stuff I'm passionate about 
and it's not something I've done before and I'm really trying to go easier on myself and not let my perfectionism get in the way. So I do hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope that you have the courage to bring forth the treasures hidden within you, to live creatively and to follow curiosity wherever it may lead. I'll speak to you next time.